Hello, Talsi. How are ya? Hey, Oliver. What's up? How are you? What's going I'm on? Good. It's uh, well. I must say, I was. I think I was affected by the full moon energies. <laughs> I was like, woo, up and down. Wow. Yeah. So. Uh, wow. I'll I'm, tell you what. I'm still. Sh- I'm still a bit shell shocked. I think so. I'm recovering from the. Completely, and you know what? Every single person that I've spoken to has felt has said the exact same thing. I mean, it was a bit of a rough weekend, wasn't mm-hmm. it? A bit of a rough the week weekend, and actually, even like the time leading up to the full moon. I think you know, it's there's been so many shifts going on in the cosmos. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the full moon especially, it and it hit me really hard as well. Um, yeah, how did you how did you feel? Like, were you experiencing a lot of sort of emotional ups and downs, or was it more physical? Just tired and um, there were there was a bit of emotional stuff, but also it's like a, I was in a time warp. Like, I was meaning to get a lot of things done, but mm-hmm. I think I did stuff, but didn't feel like I did. You know what I mean? It's that, that kind of weird. It's not. It wasn't flowing. You know. Did you have um, any like moments of kind of out of out of the blue revelations? Because um, I actually did a I did a, a tarot spread for the collective, a general tarot read, and um, I, and it's actually on my Instagram. If anyone does want to go back and have a look at it, it's on my t-shirts and tarot Instagram page. Um, and uh, what I channeled was you know, big realizations for people, um, either receiving some kind of shocking news out of the blue or even just like suddenly having huge revelations about themselves. It was kind of quite interesting to get the cards and the way that they came out um, because I also mentioned in some of my posts um, on my page that that particular full moon um, was very much about having these kind of realizations about self and Aquarius is all about information. Mm. Um, um, and new moons are all about revealing things that are hidden. So, um, yeah, I actually got some, some confirmation from a few people that they had some kind of shocking things come in. So I was kind of interested. I've been kind of meaning to uh, ask you if anything, anything crazy kind of came to light, if you wanted to spill it to the world. <laughs> mm, let me see. Um. I think there something may have hit me but it's still packed do you know what i mean like it was more of a felt sense and by the way you're you're just um your video is gone but anyway we can hear the audio let's just go roll oh no again yeah. and it's yeah. not even mercury retrograde anymore <laughs> oliver it's mercury is direct what's going on we're just we're cursed like that it's something about our technology it's just the internet you know <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's Mexico. Or Australia, <laughs> Australia is not not that good with internet speed right. as well. So, right. But anyway, we can hear each other. I think that's fine. Okay, perfect. Uh, I mean, perfect. You can see me. I suppose. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So, how would I characterize it? Um, yeah. Um, it's that liminal space, you know. It's like. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like something's gonna happen, but I don't know yet. And oh yeah, you've got that kind of you've got that sense that something big's about to happen. I mean, I get that a lot, you know. Mm. And um, and it's so funny. I think that we, you know, people underestimate because often people feel things and they think, oh, it's just me. Mm. But it's so funny because when there's an energetic shift in, in the cosmos, like you actually feel it very much as a collective. Mm-hmm. And so that's why when you do have these, that's why I wanted to ask you, um, you know, if you had similar experiences during the full moon. Um, but it's funny because when you do um, start asking people, you know, or, or telling people this is how I feel and asking them how they feel, um, oftentimes people are like, oh, my God, yeah, I feel exactly the same. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely I felt that shift and it's kind of um, – it's kind of fun because you're like, wow, I feel like something big is going to happen, but I'm not, I'm not too sure what it is. I mean, it does cause anxiety for some people, I mm-hmm. find, um, that, that fear. Like, I know that something's around the corner. Is it good? Is it bad? Um, but I think, like, it's really beautiful when you just surrender and you're like, Some, something's going to change. I'm just, I'm ready, you know? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's yeah, it's, and I guess that's where uh, training comes in. You know, like um, holding the space for this. Um, one mm-hmm. of my teachers, um, she always says, um, "All practice is for phase transition." So you practice daily so that when things do change, it doesn't whack you. Because you've been training daily, do you know what I mean? It's like you you back a lot of this serenity, so that when, right. when the storm comes, you have all this backed up serenity ready to be used. So you'll be like awake when things happen. Well, you you, you sound like a person that doesn't necessarily like the change so much. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, actually, I I do I do like change, but as long as you're prepared. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, it's more like it's more like what? What? It's like um, it's like there's beauty in the struggle, right? So it's not that I don't l- like it. It's it's holding it and seeing what happens you know because like as oscar wilde says um the best thing in life is getting what you want and the worst thing in life is getting what you want you know it's it's that kind of thing you know right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. well i think i think that um i, I think that yes i uh, it's great that you do the like you're sort of attuned to the, the energy because in that sense I th- look, in my opinion, I don't think that you can ever be fully prepared for what's around the corner and what change mm. is coming in. So um, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily 100% agree with your uh, take on being trained <laughs> because I still think there's some things that you can't train for. However, um, what I do like is that, and, I, and let me know if you do get this, um, I find that one, if you're attuned to the energy, you do get that natural um, sense that something is coming. So you are prepared in that way. And then I also, um, I tend to get a lot of signs from my angels around the time when change is coming. So um, synchronicities, uh, 555, for example, I might find myself um, when things are about to shift dramatically for me, I might find that I'm seeing fives everywhere, five represents in numerology transformation and change and angel number 555 represents major change so i don't know if anyone listening has ever found that they're seeing you know 555 um on the clock repeatedly for example um sometimes when i'm going through a major um shifting period i might wake up three nights in a row or three mornings in a row and it's 555 on the on the clock as as i look at my phone um and that'll be like for a few days in a row like at that exact moment or 5.55 p.m. Or I might start seeing 5.55 license plates um, or street numbers, you know. Um, And then also nines. Nines and tens are great. Nines usually means that um, you're coming to the end of a cycle, so it changes. Mm. And then the ten is like you're going into the new cycle. So, um, yeah, uh, if anyone is listening and you've noticed that you're seeing those numbers but you weren't too sure what they mean, well... Now you know, change. <laughs> but um, and if you're not too sure what that change is, like I said, I mean, you may not know like specifically what that change is, but a good thing to, um, to a good practice is to bear in mind or to, to notice when you see these signs, when you see these numbers, is to stop for a second and think about what you were actually thinking about at the time when you saw that number or that sign um, because then it may be changed in relation to that particular issue or thing. Mm. so so that's that's a hot tip guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there you go yeah yeah i do get a lot of yeah and 20 yeah because i have my 24 hour clock so i, I guess uh-huh. 23 23 or 11 11 i don't know what that means okay. well you know you know 23 23 yeah that's 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 five and five you know because in numerology oh. you always break it down um, but then again, also 23 as a number has a specific meaning as well as an angel number. So again, you know, signs and synchronicities, it's very much to do with, they do have their base meanings, mm-hmm. um, but they're very much to do with uh, your natural response to them because we've talked a lot um, on previous um, episodes that like 
uh, that you need to be really in touch with your intuition because your intuition is what's, what's giving you the guidance. And so whatever your intuitive response is to a sign or a synchronicity, that's usually, that's what, that's the sign, that's the meaning that's meant for you. Okay. Of course, like, like I said, they do have the base meaning. So they, there's kind of a bridge between, you know, the, the, the technical base meaning and then how you're interpreting it and how it makes you feel and how it applies to what you've been thinking about, feeling, etc. in that moment. Because mm. it's a, a specific sign for you from your angels and your guides. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah, just going back to the full moon. So it's a cycle, right? So full moon, yeah. it will wane and then we got new moon. And it happens, oh yeah, because this is the earth and then mm-hmm. it goes like that and this is the sun. So it makes sense that it would affect everyone because unlike unlike the seasons where because of the tilt of the earth, like the northern hemisphere will be summer and it will be winter here. But with the moon, mm-hmm. everyone gets the same phases, right? And- so if it's, mm-hmm. if it's full moon here, it's full moon there as well in the in the northern hemisphere. And then, right. and then when you said full moon in Aquarius, does that mean so the Earth is moving around the sun, and then this, at a certain point, the Earth and the moon are is it con, is it like conjunction with the the constellation Aquarius? Is that how it works? And, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then, and then, I mean, it's not just about where the moon's sitting in what zodiac sign. I mean, we could, I'm not an astrologer, yeah. just so everybody knows. Um, but when I say that, you know, it's a full moon in Aquarius, at the same time, there's all sorts of planetary positions that are relevant at that time. So we have the full moon in Aquarius, but as you know, the sun is currently in Leo because we're in Leo season, mm-hmm. right? That's why everyone who's a Leo, it's your birthday at the moment. Yeah. So the sun is in Leo, the moon, um, the full moon fell in Aquarius. Um, and then there's all sorts of other aspects that are relevant at that time, you know. Um, uh, I think Venus was conjunct, so there was um, with the energies. And again, please, guys, I'm not a professional astrologer, so mm-hmm. I'm just giving you very, very uh, base uh, understanding. But I mean, it's a passion of mine. But yeah, please note, take note, disclaimer. Um, yeah, so th- there's there's all sorts of other planetary influences at that moment as well. So Venus conjunct um, Leo as well, with the, the Sun and Leo, Venus conjunct Leo. So, um, for example, this particular full moon, the way that the planets were um, situated, mm-hmm. meant that um, there was heavy influence of Venus being the planet of love. There was a heavy focus on love, all right? Mm-hmm. Leo, which is a sign that's very much focused on love, loyalty, um, family um, also had that influence, right? And then you have Aquarius, which is very much about the collective. Um, Aquarius is about community. It's about um, connection with others. Mm. Um, but uh, but Leo and uh, Leo and Aquarius are two sort of very um, opposing kind of energies in some ways because Leo is, while I said it's about love and family, is very kind of. Um, ego and sense of self, whereas Aquarius, like, a very community. So the two are kind of conflicting energies. So it's it's one of the reasons actually why a lot of people may have been feeling a little bit of struggle, kind of struggling with how they feel um, about themselves, but then their sense of self within the, the wider picture. So that's why I think that there would have been certain, like, aha moments and revelations in terms of how people feel um, is what, what people see as their place within the world and the, and the wider community, um, but then sort of trying to grapple between, you know, how they feel about them and then how that, how that relates to others and it's kind of a struggle between the ego and the wider. Um, so that would have caused some, um, a, little bit of, a little bit of struggle and maybe some emotional up and down for some people. Um, and then um, with the love aspect as well, the love influence, I think um, a lot of you listening, and maybe you can comment, um, say something in the comments if you had this, but um, and I, I felt like a lot of people uh, agreed with me when we discussed this, is that there um, was a lot of focus on considering what love really means to mm-hmm. you. Um, like uh, considering what your past relationship patterns have been, um, 
what has worked for you, what hasn't, where you've over, been overgiving and where you've been undergiving. Again, this is the influence, see the struggle between Aquarius and the Leo. Like where have you been a bit egocentric and where have you been maybe giving too much out? Um, where is it? Where where has your um, where have your love relationships been imbalanced? And then you know Aquarius is kind of um, philosophical, uh, well not philosophical per se, but unconventional. Aquarians are unconventional. So what the moon would have brought up maybe for a lot of you is considering um, you know letting go of old paradigms and old attitudes towards loving. Like what does love mean? You know we've been programmed to consider love to be a certain thing in society. We've grown up to believe relationships to be a certain thing. And, um, you know, the Aquarius full moon may have had some people thinking, well, well, what does love really mean? What's unconditional love? What's unconditional love of myself and what's unconditional love of others? Is it the way that I've been brought up? Is it what I've seen previously? Is it what I've seen in previous relationships? Does that work for me? Or are there different ways in which we can relate to one another, love one another, receive love, give love? So that would have been... Um, maybe a huge theme for the collective and maybe a lot of you listening. I'd like to know if you agree. Did, did, you, did any of that come up for you? Yeah, it's, it's like a weird synchronicity because I've been listening to this um, series of lectures by Jean Verveke on the waking up from the meaning crisis. And around that time of the uh-huh. full moon, he was talking about what Christ yeah. brought on the table and then he talked about you know mm-hmm. the, the the new testament was written in greek and one of the proponents of um the new testament was paul and he was Saul before he was like a roman uh, a jew who was also a roman citizen so there's this inner conflict in him but he made this you know that everyone it gets read on weddings like the love is kind love is patient you know but mm-hmm. the, the the word used there was agape because the the thing with the english is that we use love in many ways right oh i love chocolate or i love your hair mm-hmm. or i love you mm-hmm. as a person or i love shakespeare or i love the sun so it's it's quite vague whereas in in mm-hmm. in greek they have different words for different kinds of love so there's um there's uh, eros where it means love that consumes erotic yeah we uh, we equate it with erotic but it's much big on 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 sexual or partners but actually it's it's a bit bigger than that it's love that when you want to consume some something or be consumed by something or someone that's eros you know you become one with with the thing uh-huh. that you love like all in company yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Like, so you could be in love with a with another human, and that gets expressed in 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 sexual union. But it could also right. be like eros when it terms of a a thing, an art or a feel, mm-hmm. and you get consumed by it. So that's that. And then there's philane, mm-hmm. where it's like it's a root word of philosophy. Philane is love of phil- of um wisdom so so far as wisdom but philane is also philadelphia brotherly love so philane is more like reciprocal love where, mm-hmm. where i do something for you you do something for me and we're a group of people gi- giving and receiving from each other right right but, but, right but agape was like it's really interesting because agape is um it's like a good example he made was loving a baby so mm. when you get the baby from the hospital, you don't want to consume it. That would be grotesque, right? You know, you know it, it, it's not eros, the love right. that you have for a right. baby, right? right. It's, it's also not philane because right. it's not that human. It, it, it's not going to give to you back because it's, right. it needs, it, it's so right. dependent on you. It's unconditional. Yeah. And, yes. But even, even bigger than that is you love it and it becomes yes. a person. Yeah. So it's loving someone so that they become a person. Right. And so, so you love first without taking. Mm. But by being loved, they become mm-hmm. a person. And the beauty of that is that's how we all became people. We were all love first so that we became, can become mm-hmm. persons. And that's what in history said Christianity brought. Because when Jesus came, 
you love the prostitutes, you love the tax collector, you love the non-Jews, the Gentiles, and then by loving them, they become people. Right. So it's, it's right. An interesting. And then that's also the before, right. before it got corrupted by, you know, the the Inquisition and all that thing that happened later on. Forgiving means you give first. You know, like foreplay right. is what you do before sex. Forgiving is you give first before else, you know. So it's quite powerful. So, so while the while the the moon was in Aquarius, I was thinking all about this, you know. It's like, ah, and then you, when you were talking about it, it wasn't oh, in my head that yeah. that, that was yeah. Super interesting. No. Um, but Oliver, it says you're having connectivity issues. Like you're frozen on my end. That's fine. So you've been I frozen hope that's, since I you hope started. we're okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. I can still hear you. Me, can't you. <laughs> uh, no, like wow, yeah, but that, that's that's um that's a, that's interesting that you were thinking like that. I know you're quite philosophical, so you go quite deep into that sort of stuff. But yeah, I mean, um, it was definitely it was definitely a theme over the over the moon for sure. And a lot of people that I spoke to, and a lot of clients, um, said the same. Obviously not in the same words as you, but there, there were a lot of revelations, there were a lot of um, things coming up for people. And, and, it, and I think it became very emotional for some people because, like I said, you know, having this kind of just sudden, wow, I didn't realise that this just doesn't work for me and I didn't understand why, you know, in these past relationships that certain behaviour pattern, I, I, I didn't realise that's why maybe in the past I wasn't necessarily so happy in certain circumstances. Like, you know, maybe things didn't work, but then suddenly it's like the pieces fell into place for a lot of people. And like I said, Aquarius is, the, is, Aquarius is all that information. So it's like information coming to light and that can be information coming in externally, communication, revelations, or that could be, you know, internal, um, like, information coming to light. You know, sometimes your subconscious chooses a certain moment to reveal a certain thing, you know, and that's a response to the energy around you. And that's also because sometimes your guides and the divine sort of pick a moment to reveal a piece of information to you because that's when you've already, you've had time. That's the time when it's, which could coincide very well with when you're seeing your five by fives and your nines and your tens, you know? So. Yeah. And I just had a a question like in, in popular culture, there, there's reference when when they say the age of Aquarius. What what does that mean, really? Mm-hmm. Well, we are currently in the age of Aquarius. Right. Um, what what does it mean? Yeah. So does that mean? I think we have to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, no, but I mean, I like, you're Aquarius, saying I that it brings it upheavals. Well. So maybe that's why all these upheavals are happening because we are in that age, right? No, we are, and it's the information age. Absolutely. Um, we know after time periods, we shift from previous to present. Can't give you that. You're much, you're much better read than I am. So maybe that's your homework for next time. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I've heard it referenced many times in songs and stuff, uh-huh. so, but I, I haven't really, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, maybe before we go. Yeah. No. As I said, mm-hmm. experience. Oh, sorry. <laughs> can you say that I again? I lost. I lost. A lag. I think there's a lag. Yeah. Yeah. Can you Can you say what you said again? Yeah. No. I said. I said. Um, you know, Aquarius is like I said. It is. It's all about information, and it is about upheaval because, as I said, Aquarius. Uh, Aquarians are like the the forward thinkers of the zodiac you know they're about um freedom um they're about uh unconventional ways of doing things you know and so this is the age where things are you know coming apart to make way for the new Mm. there's certainly a lot of that happening (laughs) Mm -hmm. cool Uh, yeah there's a lot lot the world is mad (laughs) and i love that i'd rather be (laughs) I'd rather be yeah. mad than boring, so maybe that's better. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah, there's a lot to unpack, so maybe in the next episode we could unpack it more and maybe I could have a clearer sense of this yeah. thing I'm feeling. 
Um, before you go, maybe I could ask a more of a meta question in terms of your practice. Can, without right. without breaking your uh, confidentiality with your clients, just maybe give us a flavor of what kinds of people are your clients. Just just because I don't know how how you know what I mean. What, what kind of people engage you in in general terms without being specific? You know. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's interesting. I mean, um, people often ask, ask me the same question and, you know, it's funny because um, I, I do get a mix of people that are obviously very used to spirit, you know, are highly spiritual, have had many tarot readings before, are sort of, um, you know, very uh, curious about it. And then it's so funny because um, I do get a lot of people that haven't had tarot before mm. um, that it's like they find me, you know. It's like the universe puts, you know, Nothing's by accident. So people will start talking to me. And as you know, my background, um, I have always had, you know, a very spiritual person, but you know me, I've worked in uh, law, I've worked in entertainment. Um, so I have sort of um, quite a wide network of people. I do get a lot of people from those kind of backgrounds that actually have never really, up until we've had a chat, ever had any kind of they're reading, they've never kind of even thought how they're suddenly curious. I have the full gamut of like the, the highly spiritual to the to the newbie tarot virgin. Um, but yeah, I mean I generally get people, I mean the types of clients that I that I'm getting are people looking for guidance. It's it can be on issue or it can be people that are just feeling like imbalanced in some way. Um, because I think you know what I what I what I'm good at. What I, what I like to say is my specialty is energy. Okay, mm. so people come to me when when they feel they they want their energy read. So if that's on a specific situation or if it's like just you know, um, Tazi, I I don't know. I, I I'm feeling like I'm stuck in my life. I just don't know how to move forward. I mean, I I just look at the cards and get some advice from the spirit and why why they're feeling unbalanced and the cards are, are pretty are pretty good at pinpointing that so yeah was that what you were after or were you after some juicy story that i was going to keep anonymous about some about no, a client no no that, 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 that was a general you, no it's, it's just a, mm -hmm. but, no we're, uh -huh. we're we're trained lawyers so we know how to keep confidentiality so you know we know right. how to do it, yeah Yes, I'm, I was just I was just wondering. Yeah, it was just more really to expand on the stereotype of what kind of people actually go for tarot readings. Do you know what I mean? Like because when yeah, I mean yeah, when I was a lawyer, I, I mean did as I said, I, while I, I <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I mean as I said, I, I do get a lot of people that are first timers. But obviously, you have to have an element of curiosity mm. at you know at some point to you know to respond in that in that way because I do get people saying, "Wow, I've never done that." I can see obviously it does sparsity, so you're, there are obviously people that are, that are open to it. Um, and you know, because of my background, I do deal a lot with people in in the entertainment world and, and creative people, and I do find those people tend to be a little bit more um, open kind of stuff then um then you know maybe the kind of people that we you know that from the from the corporate firm that we were at but i i, I feel like it's just become more um thing you know a lot of people because we have this mass awakening going on where a lot of people are starting to question um what what they've kind of always uh known you know what they've taken as being um as being truth, you know, growing up, it's like everything is what it is. And I think now we have a mass awakening where people are really starting to question, you know, what is our purpose here? There must be more to it, you know, uh, that they're, they're, they're feeling more and more connectivity to um, each other and to the universe, you know, and, and energy is a big thing, you know, it is a trendy topic and it's also, you know, uh, very, Experiencing it now, actually, heavily physical level, and um, 
And so, yeah, I think more and more people are just into it, whether they're from, uh, whether they're spiritual or whether they are from kind of corporate environments and yeah, so the full gambit. Awesome. Thank, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, is there anything cool. else you want to say cool. before we call it uh, a day for now? Till next time. No, um, I, yeah, I just, I hope everyone's feeling good and has recovered okay after that. Um, and if anyone does anything from me, you can find my details at jetsandthoreau.com or comment under this screen. Um, and please do on my Instagram, as I mentioned, it's um, t-shirts, um, it's t-shirts, t-shirts underscore and underscore tarot. Um, and you can find all my posts there and um, and my Instagram videos and all that. Awesome. And maybe if they put comments on topics we want to discuss next time, we could do that too. Yeah. I mean, because I think uh, that we got in the moon because that's super relevant for now, but I, we can pick up our tarot again next yep. time or whatever you guys want to talk about. I'd love to hear from you. Your idea. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Stasi. And hasta okay. luego. Cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hasta luego. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>